Okay, welcome back to members of 121 Community Church in Grapevine, Texas, and our ongoing study in Church Dogmatics by Emil Brunner. We're going to look at uh, chapter 16. It's going to be pages 237 to 251. And this is a chapter dedicated to Brunner uh, and his denial of the inerrancy of Scripture. So it's a very important uh, lesson, and uh, after studying it, uh, I found out that uh, he really kind of uh, diverted away from the neo-orthodox theology that he's supposed to be representing. So uh, I do have a few questions here, but we're going to go to block three, then one, and then two. So we're going to start in block three. Let's go to block three, because the criticism is against Calvin's Biblicism. The criticism, the reason Brunner rejects the inerrancy of Scripture is he opposes fundamentalism. So block three, for Calvin, faith included belief in Scripture as authoritative. He posited an orthodox Biblicism. He quoted 2 Timothy 3.16, all Scripture is God-breathed. Theod Neustas, Theonustas, God breathed. It combines Theos, God, and Neo, breathe out. All scripture is breathed out by God. So the inerrancy of scripture became a precondition to faith. Now Brunner, Brunner, takes us to 2 Corinthians 3, 6. And he says, this speaks against Calvin's idea. It reads, we are ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the spirit. Uk grammatas. Not of the letter. Uk grammatas. Allah numatas, but of the spirit. Allah numatas. So, Brunner places these two scriptures in opposition, opposition to each other and uh, in kind of a paradoxical way. And according to his own theology, neo-Orthodox theology, they should, they don't cancel each other out. They should be resolved dialectically. If we're going to really follow neo-Orthodox theology, these two scriptures that seemingly oppose each other should be resolved dialectically, and I believe that they can be resolved dialectically. So, uh, when I look at uh, what he says in block three, my response is, uh, well, this remained consistent with neo-orthodox theology, and this place, 2 Timothy 3.16 and 2 Corinthians 3.6, in dialectical engagement with each other. In other words, Scripture can be God-breathed and uh, inerrant, and at the same time it can be um, spiritual and not uh, word for word, letter for letter, inerrant. Both can be true in dialectical relationship to each other. And this is where uh, I think Barton Brunner failed because they rejected fundamentalism. And fundamentalists to this day do not care for neo-orthodoxy. Fundamentalists to this day do not care for Karl Barth. And it all boils down to this uh, rejection by Bart and Bruner of the inerrancy of Scripture. My contention is that you can take 2 Timothy 3.16 and 2 Corinthians 3.6 and have them become dialectically related to each other as neo-orthodox theology posits. That is supposed to be the neo-orthodox position. 
Karl Barth is the father of dialectical neo-orthodox theology. There's supposed to be a dialectical resolution of these uh, opposites. And I think that they, if you put these two scriptures in opposition to each other, they are resolved as uh, the inerrancy of scripture, but not as verbal plenary. And that is a position held by the Southern Baptist faith. So you can affirm the inerrancy of Scripture, but at the same time, you affirm the inerrancy of Scripture as uh, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. So I think you can have these two Scriptures dialectically resolved by uh, having them dialectically engage each other. And that's the position that is held by the Southern Baptist faith. So I think you can affirm the inerrancy of Scripture. But uh, Bruner is opposing fundamentalism. He's opposing strict fundamentalism. Calvin's very strict biblicism. Verbal plenary. And uh, we can oppose verbal plenary. And at the same time, we can affirm the inerrancy of Scripture. Let's go to block one, where we uh, read, Faith is not belief in the inerrancy of Scripture, according to Bruner. Scripture mediates faith. It testifies to new personal being. And to truth and grace in Christ, John 1.17, God's righteousness is united with man's salvation. Faith becomes effective as a life of agape, self-sacrificial love. Belief in inerrancy does not equal a life of faith. Faith is an eschatological movement from idea to reality, never degraded to simply belief. And I agree with that. I mean, you can still hold to the inerrancy of Scripture, and you can hold to that. That, of course, yes, uh, faith is more than simply belief. It is a, it's a, a verb. It's pistuo. It's a, a living a life of faith. And uh, we've discussed that in previous lessons. But, yes, faith is not simply belief. And also it should not be degraded to the Catholic stance of unformed faith in need of sacrament. And he says, sacramental faith was rightly opposed by the Reformers. For Paul, faith is reception of the love of God in Christ. So his conclusion is, we must negate both sacramental faith and sola scriptura. We must reject and negate the sacramental faith posited by the Catholic Church and sola scriptura, posited by the Protestant Church. In other words, uh, Calvin's Biblicism, that's what he equates with Sola Scriptura. So Bruner says we have to reject sac sacramental faith posited by the Catholic Church, but the Protestant Church, we need to negate and reject Biblicism, Sola Scriptura, Calvin's Bib Biblicism. Now, I say you can reject both of those and negate both of those, and you can still affirm the inerrancy of Scripture uh, as God breathed and not of the letter but of the Spirit. I believe you can affirm Second Timothy 3.16 and 2 Corinthians 3.6 both and resolve them dialectically and still hold to a view of inerrancy that differs from fundamentalism but that still is the inerrancy of scripture doctrine. Let's go to block two. Scripture is a pneumaticas spiritual not grama verbal plenary. Okay, he's going to a 2 Corinthians 3.6 there. 
It's uk grammatas. It's not of the letter. It is ala numatas, but instead it is of the spirit. That's where we're going in block two. The transition took place from faith to doctrine uniting the historical with the transcendent. Christian personalism, personalism opposes secular materialism. And it also opposes false German idealism. Bart and Brunner did not care for Hegel. And uh, instead we affirm a personalism and a self that is transcended by the transcendent presence of God. There is a realm of transcendence. And I agree with that. I do affirm there is a realm of transcendence. There is a realm of spirit. And that uh, our faith is one of personalism. We are restored to personal relationship with our Father in Heaven through Christ. I affirm Block 2, Note 1. Doctrine unites the historical with the transcendent. Now here's where Bart wants to clarify his position. Doctrine is the vehicle for faith. It becomes an influential ideology. And he would go so far as to say that scripture is a vehicle for faith. Then faith becomes the eschatological transformative process. Which... Uh, brings about the intentionality of the word. As believers, we anticipate God's promised future reality. We anticipate the eschaton. So faith is essentially participation. And that is the view of the Apostle Paul. I agree with that. Faith is participation in the work of the Holy Spirit, where Christ is Curious Lord. The beam of revelation breaks into chronological time. We come to recognize Scripture as spirit serving the experience of faith, never merely grammar letter, but spirit. All of Block 2 is dedicated to uh, 2 Corinthians 3.6. We are ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. And we can agree with that and still affirm the inerrancy of Scripture. This is where I think uh, Bart and Bruder made an error by completely throwing out the doctrine of the inerrancy of Scripture because they rejected Calvin's Biblicism. They rejected fundamentalism. Well, you don't have to affirm fundamentalism to believe in the inerrancy of Scripture. You can still affirm a belief in the inerrancy of Scripture. And the Southern Baptist Convention, as an example, does affirm 2 Timothy 3.16, and it does affirm 2 Corinthians 3.6 both. And we can resolve those dialectically. We can affirm that Scripture is inerrant and God-breathed, and it is not of the letter, but of the Spirit. All we really do there is we affirm the inerrancy of Scripture, but not as verbal plenary biblicism. That's where Bart got in trouble. That's where Bruner got in trouble. And uh, they didn't hold to their own theology because Rather than setting 2 Timothy 3.16 and 2 Corinthians 3.6 in opposition to each other than throwing out the doctrine of inerrancy, the neo-Orthodox position says that no, those opposites are to be resolved dialectically. Neo-Orthodox theology is dialectical theology. And Bruner did not resolve those two verses dialectically. He threw out inerrancy along with Bart throwing out inerrancy, but if you allow those two scriptures to be resolved dialectically, you can still affirm the inerrancy of scripture, but not as Calvin's Biblicism, not as verbal plenary, not as fundamentalism, but you can affirm 
the inerrancy of scripture and still be consistent with neo-orthodox dialectical theology. So to me, this lesson, I mean, it's important. Brunner felt it important enough to dedicate an entire chapter to throwing out the inerrancy of scripture. But uh, what he should have done is stuck to his own theology, neo-orthodox dialectical theology, and he should have resolved 2 Timothy 3.16 and 2 Corinthians 3.6 dialectically, and if you resolve them dialectically, you do not have to throw out the doctrine of the inerrancy of Scripture. You do not. You simply negate verbal plenary. You negate Calvin's Biblicism, but you still affirm God breathed Scripture that is not of the letter, but of the Spirit. It's going to wrap up a very important chapter 16, and next time we will take up uh, chapter 17, 251 to 261. That'll wrap up uh, 237 to 251.